In this video, I'm going to share with you an evolving concept of manipulating the microbiome in your gut to improve MS outcomes. Don't turn away because all of that starts right now. Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. I started this YouTube channel to help my own MS clinic patients learn between clinic visits, and it's my hope that through these videos, I can help you learn too. Today, I would like to discuss the gut microbiome and how manipulating it might in fact help multiple sclerosis outcomes. Now, as an MS neurologist, I routinely recommend that people impacted by MS take probiotics, but not for their immune system, I recommend they take probiotics to help them with their gut health. What I have been learning, however, is the evolving literature is starting to support the idea that if we can properly manipulate the microbiome, we might be able to make things better in the setting of multiple sclerosis. I've been doing some research that I'm excited to share with you today to kind of help you understand how that's even possible. So with that preamble, let's jump in. The microbiome refers to a community of microbes that live on and in the human body. So we're talking about bacteria, fungi, viruses, and even parasites. And these microorganisms colonize different parts of our body. The vast majority are actually found in our gut, in our colon. And when you look at the number of microbes, there's literally like a one-to-one -one ratio between human cells and microbes. Now, before you freak out and think, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm covered in bugs, these are helpful microorganisms. They literally play critical roles in human health. And the microbiome is involved in modulating the immune response, metabolism, uh, and even brain function. The term dysbiosis refers to an imbalance in the microbiome, where you have too many of one kind of bacteria or microbe and not enough of another. And you have a lower diversity overall oftentimes, so you have a less diverse population of microbes. Now, this can be caused by illness, it can be caused by stress, which is a major concern of mine. It can be caused by antibiotic use and maybe even steroid use. Now, dysbiosis has been associated with some human health problems, such as inflammatory bowel disease, even obesity, and may be tied to certain autoimmune conditions. Obviously, my interest as an MS neurologist is how it might influence multiple sclerosis. Now, this is where it gets really interesting. When you look at the microbiome of people impacted by MS, they have dysbiosis. So their gut flora is not normal, and they have a smaller biodiversity, so they have less overall microbes, and the proportions of microbes are not in a healthy proportion. And so they're lacking some of the healthy gut bacteria that we would expect to see. And it raises the question, could we alter this not just to help the gut health, but could we alter it to affect the immune response? Now, this is a very early area of research. Uh, I'm not sitting here telling you, yes, yes, that we can cure MS or that we can really, really change the disease just yet, but it's got me thinking. And the reason I'm so excited about it is it's not very hard to manipulate the microbiome. We can impact the microbiome through several different means. And so, if we could figure out whether this would help MS, it's an easy potential therapeutic target. So let's start to talk about probiotics. So probiotics are living microorganisms, mostly bacteria, which are very similar to the healthy microorganisms that we have in our healthy microbiomes. And so the idea is, is that you have billions of uh, healthy bacteria in a pill or in a food, and then you ingest it and it helps populate your microbiome with healthy bacteria. The goal here would be to spread out the biodiversity, to have more different kinds of healthy bacteria, and to help get them uh, in order. So to increase the populations of these healthy colonies and hopefully decrease populations of less healthy colonies. So where do you find probiotics? You can find it in a lot of fermented foods. And so if you think about things like uh, kimchi or kefir, or certain uh, Greek yogurts, or sauerkraut, or pickles, or pickled eggs, or miso soup, or tempura, or kombucha. Those are all uh, foods that are largely fermented, and they're great sources of healthy probiotics. You also can purchase probiotics as a supplement, as a pill, um, oftentimes coming in a capsule, or a tablet, or a powder. Now, it's really important that you look into the uh, quality 
uh, of these probiotic supplements because they're not all equal. And you want to make sure that if you're going to go that route, that you're getting a really high quality with a large number of bacteria and as many diverse bacteria options as possible. Next, I would like to introduce the term prebiotic. So probiotics are healthy gut bacteria. A prebiotic is literally the food that those gut bacteria eat. So specifically, we're talking about non-digestible, uh, largely fiber components, that when you eat them, you can't metabolize them on your own. And so they pass essentially unbroken down into your colon where your healthy gut bacteria, the uh, probiotic bacteria, can then ferment them and use them as energy. And so when you think about adding probiotics, you also want to add in prebiotics to feed those probiotics. Now, where are sources of prebiotics? Well, there's a lot of healthy foods that will provide them for you, like lots of different fruits and vegetables. I'm talking about artichokes, asparagus, bananas, garlic, onions, leeks, tomatoes. I mean, there's a bunch of them, right? You also can find whole grains like oats and barley and wheat that are good sources of prebiotics. There's lots of legumes, various beans and lentils, chickpeas. These are all good sources of prebiotics. And lastly, there's a bunch of nuts like almonds and flaxseed that I particularly recommend. Now, you can buy a prebiotic supplement. And the same comments for probiotic supplements apply here. You need to make sure that the prebiotic supplement is of high quality and ideally lots of different sources of prebiotic fiber. Next, I would like to introduce the term postbiotic. So a postbiotic is nothing more than the metabolic byproducts or the waste products produced by the probiotic bacteria when they ferment prebiotics. And these waste products, these metabolic products made by the probiotics interact with the human body and they help modulate the immune response, they help impact brain health, and they're involved in the metabolism. This is where I think there might be a link to improving the inflammatory milieu and maybe impacting autoimmune conditions like MS. So let me take this a step further. The specific postbiotic uh, metabolite that I want to talk about are short chain fatty acids. So when the probiotic bacteria eat the prebiotic fiber and they ferment it, they can make these small short chain fatty acids. And these would be things like acetate and butyrate. And I wanna focus on butyrate because that's where I saw the most uh, literature. So these short chain fatty acids have an impact on the gut and they can be absorbed in the bloodstream and they can have an impact on metabolism and influence the immune response. So as it relates to the gut, these short chain fatty acids can trigger the gut to tighten the tight junction between the cells and make the gut less leaky. Also, it does some things at the gut level to enhance defenses. Uh, it results in a protein called defensin being made and increases IgA, which is an antibody product, uh, in the gut. And so these short chain fatty acids can help improve the gut and decrease pathogens entering through the gut, etc. Now, they also interestingly play a role by stimulating dendritic cells, and this can have an impact, turns out, on regulating T cells, and in specific T cell regulation, um, which can cause an anti-inflammatory milieu. Now, I'm not telling you that that then makes MS better, but that's what I'm wondering about. At the end of the day, it's our goal at the Boster Center for Multiple Sclerosis to help people impacted by MS live their very best life despite having the condition, and to make MS as boring as possible. And we definitely use a multi-pronged approach. And so adjusting nutrition, and in specific, maybe adding in uh, probiotics and prebiotics, would be an awesome addition uh, to a healthy MS lifestyle. Now, before I wrap this up, I also want to share that you can impact the microbiome in other ways besides just food and supplements. Intermittent fasting, which is something that I adore and I talk a lot about on this channel, has been shown to improve the gut microbiome, which is really fascinating. And stress management has been shown to improve the microbiome, which is really, really important. Lastly, there's some research looking at fecal transplants to help the microbiome, but that's outside the scope of this, and it's kind of a little bit raw. Okay, I'm going to wrap this video up, guys. Thank you very much for walking through this process with me as I try to understand pre and probiotics and how they may impact the immune system through the postbiotic metabolites, short-chain fatty acids. I will continue to share updates as I learn more. And until my next Monday morning video, or until my next monthly live stream, or even better yet, 
the next time I see you at the Boster Center for MS. This is Aaron Boster saying be safe and take care.